It just pisses me off that when people take a look at a product of tomorrow, all they can see are the problems of yesterday. Yeah, that didn't age very well, did it? Last week, Oppo Malaysia let a couple of us check out their brand new concept phone, the next gen Oppo X2021. And when I first saw it, you know, I was immediately reminded of that first Oppo Find X that I saw all those years ago. But that's both a good and a bad thing. First things first, the Oppo X2021 is a concept phone in the traditional sense. It's not like, you know, like a Mi Mix device where it's a concept phone, but then you can just go to a shop and buy it. The Oppo X2021 is a concept phone designed to be a proof of concept. I mean, they didn't even really want to tell us the specs, and when we took a peek at the About Device page, the phone was actually labelled as a Find X2 Pro, and you know, it had basically all the same last-gen specs as that device. But the concept that it was trying to prove is definitely not last gen. You know, it's the same basic principle as like a folding smartphone. Basically, you start with like a small form factor, like a phone-like device that can then be expanded into a more immersive and more productive, larger form factor. The only difference is, well, this one rolls. Okay, I say roll, but you can't actually see anything rolling. Like, from an observer's perspective, it just kind of stretches from a 6.7 inch screen into a 7.4 inch screen. But obviously for tech like this, there is a lot more going on in the background. Oppo's built a pair of roll motors and a set of two-in-one plates for structural rigidity with no gaps between the segments. These motors also apply equal pressure across the length of the phone so that the display isn't put under unnecessary stress when expanding. Then of course is the key piece of the puzzle, which is the flexible OLED that Oppo has lined with what they call a warp track laminate. This is made up of high strength rolled steel and is used to reinforce the screen, keeping it strong yet flexible. Now a lot of those are words that look really cool and are designed to sound really high tech on a brochure, but the basic principle is that the excess screen sort of wraps around the side of the device and tucks in underneath it. And then when you expand it, you know, the phone, like two motors, push the side of the phone and then it pulls the excess screen up to the front so that you get like the bigger like tablet viewing experience. And I gotta say, it looks like it seems to work really well. When the phone is expanding, you can feel the display coming up from the side of the phone where it extends. But unless you use your hands to feel for it, you can't really tell. And that I believe is the magic of it and it has more to do with the software than the hardware. Early generation folding smartphones had some pretty terrible software. You'd often see like a lot of jittering and like even glitching out, like the whole phone like would go crazy when you unfold or you know refold the device, which makes the product feel like a little bit incomplete. But with the Oppo X2021, the software looks almost seamless as you expand the phone. Like every element on the display just kind of stretches out to fill in the new screen real estate. It goes a long way to make things feel and look seamless, even though this rolling phone is probably, you know, less of a complete smartphone than any of those first-gen folding devices. And that's really impressive. You know, sometimes when I'm not paying full attention, I would even miss when the phone, you know, begins rolling out. But don't get me wrong, just because it's like very seamless and it looks really cool when it works, the actually getting it to like expand takes a little bit of practice. You see, the motors are well motorized, so you can't physically pull the phone open like you would with a sliding smartphone like the Mi Mix 3 for example. Instead, you trigger the expanding and contracting by sliding your finger along the side of the device, upwards to expand and downwards to shrink. The sensor is on the power button, I believe, but getting it to register a swipe was way more difficult than I anticipated. It took me several tries to get it to work right because if I used too little pressure, then it wouldn't register, but if I used too much pressure, then I would accidentally hit the power button and put the phone to sleep. 
Of course, I understand why this is necessary because you don't really want your phone to accidentally expand in your pocket or like in your phone holder, for example. And with a bit of practice, you can get it to work pretty consistently. Plus, the other option to close the phone is that you can double tap the power button, which I guess is more reliable. Oppo says that the motors are rated to up to about 200,000 cycles, so that puts it pretty much on par with like some of the other motorized uh, solutions that we've already seen so far. When it's expanded, the phone is also really rigid. Like you can grip it with the same vigor as you would with a regular smartphone without the motors, you know, completely collapsing on you. Of course, I didn't try to break it by squeezing really hard because uh, the Oppo Rep's face was already white as a sheet even when I was just, you know, holding the device. Again, understandable, because this is a concept phone and it's not ready for the mass market and it doesn't have to be. This phone doesn't even have a selfie camera and you know, we all know that you can't really call something a smartphone unless it has a selfie camera. Okay, so since this is a concept phone, let's talk about the concept. Like, why does this phone exist? Like, why do we need a phone like this in a world where we already have like the far more mature and practical folding smartphone? Is this even better than a folding smartphone? Well, I will say that it's certainly cooler and more futuristic if you're into that. You know, doing like a little swipe and then having your phone expand automatically. Wow. In front of you, you know, it's definitely a lot more jaw-dropping than like a folding phone where you have to pry it open like a Neanderthal. You also retain the benefits of having both a small and a large form factor while eliminating the need for a second screen. But, and this is a big but, I don't actually think that it's more practical than a folding smartphone. At first, what I thought would be an immediate strength that it would have over the folding phone is that we wouldn't have like, you know, the bumpy, warpy display or the infamous crease that you'd find in today's folding smartphones. But it's still there. It's maybe a little bit less noticeable, but the display on the X2021 is definitely not as taut as like a regular smartphone's panel. Finally, there's the whole motorized smartphone idea. Remember how in my Find X video I said something along the lines of this being a phone of tomorrow? Yeah, well, that hasn't really caught on, has it? I mean, we've already seen a couple of different variations and a couple of smartphone makers, you know, try this. But at the end of the day, we're just right back to the same old rigid wafer that we've known and loved, only now with like a punch hole or a notch instead. I guess when it comes down to it, the consumer still values stuff like water resistance, dust resistance, and you know, the peace of mind of having like a solid, rigid device without a whole bunch of moving parts to go wrong. And you know, it's really hard to convince people that um, a phone like the X2021 would be more reliable than something like this or even like a manual human operated folding smartphone. But you know what? I'll still give Oppo an A for effort, you know? Good on you for pushing the envelope and you know, really like pushing the limits of where technology can go. And at the end of the day, even if people don't end up buying a whole bunch of your devices, they will still have a special place in my heart. Alright, that's it. Those are all my thoughts on the new Oppo X2021 rolling smartphone. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments below. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this video. This is the end of it. Thank you so much for watching. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can like us on Facebook, but our home on the internet will always be at soyachinchow.com. In the meantime, you know, stay tuned for the next video lah, okay? I'm Rory and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.